prior to the accident, I enjoyed riding my bike. That's all it was, it was, it was just something fun to do. Now, I don't want to go out and ride my bike for fun. I want to compete. He set a benchmark time and he just wants to beat that time and prove anyone wrong that might have had any inkling of doubts about what he can do. He's worked so hard and when you see the amount of hours that go into training, he 100% deserves to be going to Tokyo. I was a truck driver. Went up into the Adelaide Hills. As I was coming down the steeper part of the hill, that's when everything catastrophically failed in the truck. So when I went to use the brakes, immediately I got a warning light and an alarm that sounded in the cabin of the truck. It was around about a minute or so to when I got to the bottom of the hill. The lights in front of me to go straight had quite a lot of cars. The light to turn left had only one car, so I just grazed that car, rolled the truck, and then from there, I collided with the other cars that were on the side of the road. I, I definitely recall being certain that I was going to die. I remember thinking about Karis and how I wasn't going to get to say goodbye. We had a phone call saying, you need to get to the hospital straight away. So when I arrived at hospital, I had to make a very quick decision whether to keep Darren's leg or to amputate it. I woke up for a very brief amount of time, but the best I could do was lift up my hand and I just signed to Karis. I had to let him know he only had the one leg there. A few days after the disaster that caused Darren's serious injuries and my husband's death, the coroner's inquest was opened we had the honour of seeing what happened when the accident occurred. We came to no other conclusion than there was something wrong with the truck. He'd done nothing wrong. I did speak to his wife and then I let her know that the entire family was on his side. We weren't holding any animosity towards him. We just wished him a speedy recovery. A day or two after the surgery, two OTs came into my room to help me transfer from the bed to the wheelchair. I just swung myself into the chair. The faces of these OTs were just in shock. That's when I started to see that I could prove people wrong. Three months was what it took from the accident, amputation, rehab, to, to riding a bike for the first time. It just didn't feel any different. My first coach, he sort of said, you know, I think you've probably got a bit more in you than you might realise. Would you like me to, to write you a training program? There's only one catch. I was going to set up this test, four laps around the track, one with a prosthetic on and one with a prosthetic off. I couldn't fathom that I was going to be even remotely capable of riding with one leg. Much to his disgust, he was faster without it. We made a pact from that point and went, well, okay, let's drive this now. so after all of my court stuff started to happen. I remember getting a phone call from our team director. And he said, Darren, you've, you've been selected for world championships in South Africa. And then it was probably a week or two later, he called me again. There's actually a clause in the athlete agreement that states, if you are found guilty of or charged with a indictable offense, then you are ineligible to ride uh, for a national team. I definitely wasn't going to give up on my first World Championships. I always knew I didn't do anything wrong that day. And I did everything in my power to minimise the damage that was going to happen. I actually approached Jan. She was the only person I could think of that might be able to help sway the board. I let them know that they can't possibly win this prosecution. So if he can continue with his training, it's worth it. Because all you've got to do is wait out the charges to fall. And the day before the trial, 
the prosecutor dropped the charges, just like that. Again, I got a phone call from our team director and he said, they've overturned the decision and you're in. He has got such determination. You can see it on his face and you can hear it in his voice. That determination to, to make something out of his life after everything that has happened. It's the ingredients are there that yeah, could turn Darren into potentially a Paralympic legend. When the accident happened, I couldn't see our lives being better. Once he began having a goal, it made a huge difference. Reflecting upon the last five and a half years, it makes me realise I didn't know very much about myself. and I, I don't think I'd be half the person I am now without the accident. Definitely there's more in me than I thought I'd be able to uncover.